peace and black power, family. This your brother saw another coming at you once again with a strong, powerful social. House of Consciousness presents Brother Umar Johnson, the conspiracy to destroy black boys. I want you brothers and sisters out there to pay close attention. Not only is he going to tell you the problem, but he's going to give you the solution. So let's check out my brother, Omar Johnson. Family. Okay, miseducation is essential in order for oppression to really deal with the black male problem that they have here in America. Miseducation has three primary components. Number one, to teach the black boy to hate himself. Number two, to teach the black boy to love white people. And number three, to effeminize and, if possible, homosexualize the black boy. Those are the three main goals of education. Teaching of self-hate, teaching of white love, and to effeminize or homosexualize the black male, which means to break his spirit. And one of the reasons why so many of our boys drop out of school is because the way they are treated. I always say there's no such thing as a black male dropout rate. There's only a black male pushout rate. Our boys are pushed out of school by the treatment they get from a predominant female teacher base and a predominantly white female teacher base. You have to understand, public education is the coming together of middle class white women and poor black boys. Middle class white women and poor black boys. Two populations that this society for most of its history, have tried to keep apart. So a white woman generally has a fear and a contempt for the black male. How can you teach someone if you fear him or hate him or is not safe in his company? So if we want to improve the education of black boys, then they're going to have to be taught by black men. Because all that self-hate, man, is ridiculous stuff that we got out here. Exactly. There's basically four types of schools you can have. You can have a religious institution, a public school, a charter school, or a private school. Now, religious schools are the most free of all of those four types I just named. Okay, if you have a religious school, then the oversight by the State Department of Education is minimal because it's religious. They have the most power in terms of educating their own. Public schools and charter schools, which are a form of public schools, constant oversight. Okay? Private schools which is like what your brother Marcus Klein is doing here in Chicago, that's the best route to go because a private school, for many intents and purposes, is almost like an independent country. You get to set your own laws. Now, there's certain federal and state mandates you have to follow, but you have a lot more control over the day-to-day -day operation of your school. And I think as a community, we have to look at private schools to properly educate our black boys. There's no way we can leave them in public schools and charter schools and expect them to be the type of men we need them to be. The primary goal of public education is to socialize. The primary goal of education is to socialize. I always say that your son probably can't read, but he knows the Pledge of Allegiance. Can't write his name, but he knows the Star Spangled Banner. Okay, can't do math, but he knows who George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and Abraham Lincoln was, although all three of them were anti-African presidents. So the purpose of public education is to socialize. And that is one of the biggest reasons why we have this great homosexual threat, because now, as a population control measure, they are socializing black children to be lesbian and homosexual as a strategy to reduce the birth rate in the black community. Homosexuality is not being pushed as a cultural revolution. Homosexuality is being pushed as black population control to convince an entire generation of black children to have sex with people of like gender. Why? Because if I can convince black boys to cohabitate with black boys, and if I can convince black girls to cohabitate with black girls, then what do I do to the black population rate, the birth rate? I cut it in half. Same thing with prison. The mass incarceration of black men, which is a function of miseducation, is being done to control the black population rate. When a black male is incarcerated, and when he is incarcerated during his prime years, from about 18 until 38, then what you are also doing is not only incarcerating him, but you are incarcerating the two babies that he would have had had he not been incarcerated. Oh. Everything that's done must be viewed as a population control strategy. Everything that's done is population control. Even when you look at the welfare laws that were put into effect in the black community, many of them forced 
okay, the woman to separate from the man in order to get certain types of assistance. Everything is about controlling our numbers. So whether it's AIDS, whether it's Ebola, whether it's special ed, whether it's Ritalin, whether it's jail, whether it's homosexuality, everything is about exterminating the black gene. Eugenics means the extermination of the black gene. Not the poor black gene or the rich black gene. Not the light-skinned black gene or the dark-skinned black gene. Not the educated black gene or the uneducated black gene. It is about the extermination of all of us, which is why bourgeois, elitist, middle-class Negroes have the wrong idea, because many of them believe that if they accommodate the system, the system will spare them. Yes, the system will spare them until the end, because they need them in order to exterminate the masses. But once the masses are exterminated, you can best believe that the elitist clique is next to follow. White supremacy does not put black people in groups. It is for the extermination of all of us. I also believe that the religious institutions have a lot to do with how we've gotten in the condition that we're in, but I also think that they have a lot to do with why we stay in the condition that we're in. For example, when you look at most inner cities, you have churches, masjids, and religious temples on almost every corner. But if you were to do a survey to find out how many of those religious institutions offer a free academic enrichment program to African American children who have delayed skills, almost none of them do. And the ones that do, they only do it because they get grant money from the local, state, or federal government to do that. Unfortunately, our religious institutions have, are just as selfish as individual black people have become, and they're not really interested in helping our children unless someone's going to give them money for it. It bothers me how we can have children in, on, in church on Sunday learning about Jesus, but yet they can't even read Jesus in the Bible. Or children who go to the mosque on Friday learning about Muhammad, but they can't even read his name in the Quran. My point to the religious institutions, and I don't have a problem with religion. I don't see anything wrong with them. In fact, sometimes they can be a benefit. Okay, they can be a benefit, but religion is neutral. Any institution is neutral. It's how it's used. Religion was used to help fight for the end of slavery, but religion today is being used to re-enslave the African mind. So the problem with religion is that its scope is limited. It's no longer what it used to be to the community. A hundred years ago, you could go to the church in order to get a job. You can go to the church if you had social issues. You can go to the church if you had run-ins with the law and if your rights were impeded upon. Unfortunately, today, the church is only prepared with helping black people get ready for heaven, but they're totally content with allowing black people to exist in political hell every day. Mm. Whenever you want to control a people, there's three institutions that are absolutely necessary to control and dominate any people. Number one, you must control the school. Number two, you must control the church. And number three, you must control the military. Those are the three most important institutions in any community. So when you look at the black community, obviously, we don't have our own community police force. So that's totally controlled by Europeans. Then when you look at the church, that's also totally controlled by Europeans. We tend to look at the mosque and look at the church and say that these are black institutions. No, they're not. The process, the mindset, the ideology is totally European. We don't have an African-centered form of Islam, and we don't have an African-centered form of Christianity. We got European and Arab forms of religion that are simply being managed by black personalities. Religion is the most political institution in the black community. It always has been. When slavery began, it was done through the church. When the missionaries came into Africa to subdue and colonize, they did it through the church. Whenever the enemy wants to get a stronghold in the black community, they call up the clergy. They call up the imams. They call up other religious leaders who they know will push forward their program. There is nothing non-religious about the church. The church and the mosque are totally religious. And in fact, one of the reasons why black people are being so successfully oppressed and subdued in this country is because many of the people who stand at the pulpit are afraid. They are afraid to do the work that they claim they were sent here by God to carry out. As far as homosexuality goes, we have to understand that the movement to homosexualize black children, and particularly the males, began in 1972. The Rockefeller World Population Council, along with Planned Parenthood International, and yes, I'm talking about the same Planned Parenthood that was started by eugenicist Margaret Singer to open up abortion clinics near the black community to reduce the black population. 85% of all Planned Parenthood abortion centers are located in satellite areas 
adjacent to the black community. In fact, it's been estimated that since the birth of Planned Parenthood in the 1900s, that black people have exterminated more than three million of their own children. When we hear these conversations about Hispanics taking over as the largest ethnic group, that's only because Hispanics tend not to kill their children as much as black people do. And the reason why we kill our children so often is because of the self-hate. But getting back to homosexuality, the Rockefeller World Population Council and Planned Parenthood decided that homosexuality must no longer be viewed as a mental disorder. Up until 1972, homosexuality was listed in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. That's the Bible of psychology and psychiatry. Everything we diagnose is in that book. And if you are a parent, you should have a copy of it. You can get it at any bookstore. It's a little silver book with blue letters, DSM-4, okay? And what they decided was that had to come out. Up until 1972, homosexuality was a mental disorder. At the American Psychiatric Convention in 72 or 73, the homosexuals were able to uh, infiltrate the movement and was able to encourage the psychiatrists to vote to remove homosexuality from the list. So homosexuality has only been normal in America for about 35 years. Once they decided that homosexuality would no longer be abnormal, it was then decided that it would be pushed into the black public schools to control our population. In fact, Secretary of State Henry Kissinger in 1974, look at the dates, 72, Rockefeller World Population Council and Planned Parenthood said we got to change things. 73, they take it out of the DSM. It's no longer abnormal behavior. 74, Henry Kissinger in a national security memorandum said that we should consider, we should consider homosexuality as a population control strategy in the black community. And that is right now, that's one of the reasons why President Obama's Secretary of Education from Chicago, Arne Duncan, is a supporter of homosexuality. In fact, the person who President Obama appointed as the safe schools and drug-free schools are right now, wants a mandatory kindergarten through 12th grade homosexual curriculum in every public school in America. Now, we know that homosexuality has roots in Greco-Roman philosophy and culture. Okay. Many of the Greek philosophers were homosexual. Many of the Roman philosophers were homosexual. Julius Caesar was homosexual. Napoleon was a homosexual. Most white psychologists teach that homosexuality is a natural adolescent male behavior, which is why I always encourage black parents, do not send your son to a white therapist or a black one unless you know their sexual orientation because many of our children are getting psychotherapy from homosexuals who are propagating the lifestyle. Homosexuality is being pushed to exterminate the community. They make the boys gay, they inject them with HIV, they inject it into our systems while, they get, while they're cohabitating and that is why HIV is the number one killer of black women on the face of the earth. They're giving AIDS to the gay men and we're giving it to our queens. Black population.